Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Friday. I'm James, and you're watching Blue Dog Reptiles. Now, today, if you haven't noticed already, what we're talking about is the blood python. Now, these guys, they get kind of a bad rep because of attitude, but most of the time when you have the bad attitudes is because they're wild-caught animals. And this one here is actually a captive bred baby. You want to make sure in these guys' setups that you have lots of, uh, lots of places because they like to hide, not necessarily burrow, but they like to go underneath. So we, that's why we actually have the piece of cork right here so that he can go down and he can hide underneath it. But a little bit about these guys. Uh, these guys come from Indonesia. They come from Thailand and Malaysia. But as always, you know, he's a snake. So he likes rodents. So if you don't like feeding an animal rodents, well, then a blood python is not for you. Look at that color. So this one in particular, so this is a Sumatran blood python, and these guys come in all different colors and uh, patterns. And then you have that gorgeous head. I love the pattern coloration around their heads. Look at that. Just sitting, waiting for prey. You're facing a log, bud, so that probably won't do well for you. Care level on these guys is intermediate. And why I say they're intermediate is because of, yes, one, because of their occasional attitude. And like I said, if you stick with captive breads, that's less likely, but also um, you need to handle these guys a lot. Otherwise they will pick up a little bit of an attitude and a sassiness, um, but also because of these guys' humidity level. And we'll get to that in a minute. Don't you guys think he's cute? This is one of my few snakes that actually doesn't have a name. So if you have a really cool name, make sure to drop it in the comments down below so we can give him the perfect name. Look at those, look at those spots down all down the back. That's awesome. Now, tank size for these guys, they need a minimum. So as a baby, um, he's sitting in a 12 by 12 by 12. Um, but as he gets bigger, these guys are going to reach four to six feet and up to 30 pounds. You heard that right. 30 pounds. Whereas most snakes get the length and then the weight is distributed amongst all the weight. These guys actually get really chunky, uh, down by their head is actually pretty slender, but the rest of their body here will get like a big fat sausage. So they're, I mean, they're really cool to look at. They're really awesome to handle but man they're heavy <laughs> this thing about lifting up your kid and that's essentially what this is going to be um but as adults these guys need a tank size of about 48 inches long by 24 inches wide and th the reason why we go so long is because one that's going to be a big chunky snake and unless you have very very sturdy wood it's not going to support his butt but they're mostly ground dwellers. They're gonna be terrestrial or they're gonna to like to burrow. Um, in this setup here, we have the pieces of cork here that he can actually go and hide underneath. And that way he can feel safe from any predators or anything like that. Or if he wants to ambush some prey, he can do that. And it's funny because when he's actually under there, he'll actually peek his head out the one side here and then just lunge out and get it. Substrate for these guys, as you can see, we have reptile soil mixed with uh, a jungle mix in here. Um, for me, it holds really good humidity. Obviously, he doesn't like plants. He likes to operate them. And he likes to actually break branches right there. But we want to make sure to accommodate the uh, humidity levels. So that's why we go with the mixture of reptile soil and jungle mix. You also know we notice we have rocks in here. Now the rock down there is actually silicone into place. So he can't burrow underneath it. That is something that I can't emphasize enough with uh, when you're scaping a setup, you wanna make sure, especially for snakes that burrow or like to be underground, that you make sure these rocks don't move. Um, we've had it unfortunately happen before or a baby snake just got under just the edge of a rock and it shifted. 
and we don't want you to make that mistake so make sure to uh, silicone or glue down any rock stretchers or any heavy decoration that you put in the, the setup temps on these guys temperature is not the issue uh, most of these guys can live very happily with just an ambient temperature of 80 to 82 with the warmer spot being about 88 degrees that's not the hard part the hard part is the humidity level the humidity on these guys needs to be between 60 and 75 percent you heard that right 75 percent oh look at that easily distracted squirrel so these guys need sprayed twice a day. You can say we just sprayed over here uh, to raise up the humidity, but you wanna make sure that these guys have a nice humid setup. I'm trying to figure out where to, I have a little cup in my hands. But when you guys are designing these setups, simple is better. These guys don't need a bunch of crazy decorations. They need a place to hide. They need a place where they could ambush prey, whether it's cork or um, a log or driftwood. They just, you don't need to go all crazy and do a setup like this where there's rock and all that, or even crazy. I mean, you can put crazy plants, but odds are this boy is going to uproot them. So just be mindful of that. Also, when you're picking them up, we stay away from the head. And that's just a safety thing. Yep, see, he's gonna, look at that belly and that head. See, as captive babies, um, they're very docile. These guys get such a terrible rep for being just these nasty snakes. And yeah, I mean, he is coiled up. Um, I did just dis disturb him from his sleep. So he's trying to figure out what's going on. And man, if you guys can feel just the pure muscle that's in these guys, it's insane. But we'll set him back in here. Move some of his stuff around so he is. But he'll be back here in probably about 20 minutes. He'll be back underneath um, this log here. But like I said, simple is better when setting up these guys' enclosure. This boy right here, um, probably in a few weeks, because he is outgrowing this enclosure that he's in, um, he will be moved up to one of our 36 by 18 by 24s so that he has more room to stretch out. But yeah, guys. And if you're wondering how much does this little beauty cost? That's a nice thing. Um, and, it, and it comes with any more um, this one in particular, the Sumatran is about $300, but you can find them for as cheap as $100. You can find them as expensive as $800. It just depends on what exactly you are looking for. So if you're new to this channel, guys, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, you guys have been subscribing left and right. And I'm so very thankful for that. Um, you're helping our channel to grow and, uh, I couldn't do what I do without you guys. And uh, every Friday we bring new videos of reptile care guides. And so if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, thanks for tuning in. As always guys, I'm James. Thanks for watching and we will see you next Friday. And if you enjoyed this, enjoy the short videos that I've been putting out every day. We haven't been doing it the last week because I've been dealing with shows and health stuff but if you enjoy those make sure to give me the thumbs up and let it, let me know what you think of all the shorts if you have any suggestions on care guides that you want to see on these beautiful different animals please let me know but anyway thanks guys we will see you next friday